great. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Metaphysical Insights. I'm William Becker, and I'm here today with the one and only Mr. Matt Pike. Um, Matt is a, a fascinating person with a lot of talents, everything from historian to writer to t storyteller to just about it, anything, builder to, I don't know, <laughs> archaeology. Um, it's, it's fascinating. Matt, welcome, and thank you so Hello, much buddy. for being here. No, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for bigging me up. As always, you're very kind to me. And straight back at you, you're an interesting sausage yourself. I've, 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 I find myself constantly interested to find out what you've been up to. And um, yeah, um, so yeah, it's nice to be here again. Very, very honored. And thank you very much for inviting me. Ah, you're welcome. We've David Cook says hello. So hey, David. Um, anyway, um, we were actually starting off on an interesting topic before um, we um, went live. Do you want to just go ahead and jump right into that? I'll try. Um, okay, we so yeah. No, 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 it's it's cool. So what I, uh, me and William were talking about just before we went live was um, the phenomenon of people um, after after they lose someone, lose someone close to them, uh, uh, seeing uh, or feeling that they see the the, the spirit or of, of the person that's uh, passed away in animal form, which uh, sounds, I know, maybe, I don't know, maybe it sounds a bit wacky hearing that from my mouth, but um, honestly, uh, I, uh, I, I, I kind of experienced this a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm quite a skeptical soul. I'm a historian and I'm all, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, honestly, um, not long after my, my, my own father passed and I was quite honestly really, really in the depths of grief and feeling ever so low, um, I kind of kept on seeing a Robin and, and it sounds, yeah, okay. So we see robins every day. I don't know if you see so, so much in the States, William, but robins, are, yeah, they're quite aggressive animals. Um, they're lovely birds. They're cute, you know, associated with Christmas there. But they do, they, they tend to be quite territorial, is what I mean, but not, maybe not aggressive. So they, if you see them in one area, you'll see them about quite often. Right. Um, but this, uh, this particular robin um, became a frequent visitor in, inside the house. Uh, I, um, uh, one occasion I was talking to you about, I was feeling, it was not long after my father had passed and I was feeling ever so low and I was in the shower and I was trying to big, get ready, uh, steal myself up for the day. And, uh, and, a, and a robin flew in through the window, uh, the robin that I kept on seeing about flew in and it just sort of sat there on the, well, it was actually on the, on the bowl where, where, where I shave and just sort of sat there for a little while and, I, you know, I just carried on shaving, uh, sorry, carried on showering. And then um, as I as I left, I sort of, I didn't chase it out or anything like that. It just gently sort of hopped off, hopped off and off it went. Um, and a couple of days later, when I was feeling, again, I was feeling quite low about the whole whole scenario because the father hadn't passed, long passed. And I was getting into my car and I was saying, Do you know, we, we've been on a drive before. I took you to Walt Broadway Castle on a tour. And, and right. I, 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 I really like convertibles and I have a I have a very old convertible that I was driving an old Saab 93 Swedish car very old slightly battered um but very well loved and and as and the roof was down and as I went to sit in my in the seat in the passenger seat the the robin was sat there again and it didn't just as soon as I got there jump out it um traveled along with me as I, until I left the village where we left and then it flew off again and then time after time I kept on to, and I, I don't know if I was just transposing my own um beliefs or whatever was happening to me at that point of my slightly altered state through grief or whatever it was um i was seeing this robin everywhere yeah and to the point where uh, my my lovely wife um she gave me a little little porcelain robin and that was yeah and that was kind of what i was saying and it's and i and i was i was i was admitting to you as through guilt of um lack of proper proper research because i i only really started thinking about this about half an hour before we spoke um there's a there's a fancy latin word that begins with t that that actually explains what that that, that phenomenon is um okay. and it's it's not just me there's there's lots of people who um they kind of uh i don't know if it's transferring or if it actually is and and i, I was i said to you i'd be interested to to know how you what you thought about that william what 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 your what your feelings were 
I think it's pretty interesting. Um, I definitely have heard of some, uh, when somebody passing either an animal or some other sign of the person being there. Now, did your father have a connection with Robbins? Is there any? Well, you... <laughs> well, no, that's, it, it sounds, um, yeah. Uh, well, uh, it, my, my, my dad and my, my family, uh, they're, they're a family of farmers. So right. my, my, my dad would have, was a farmer. So yeah, I guess he would have seen a lot of Robbins. There's no denying that. Um, yeah, I was very lucky. I grew up in a, a farm in Wiltshire. And my, my father farmed the farm that his father farmed that his father's father farmed. And then, yeah, so I was, I was, it's a little bit idyllic, really. You don't realize when you're growing up in that scenario, <laughs> you just sort of like grow up and you're like, right. oh, hang on. That was quite nice, wasn't it? Um, yeah, sorry, carry on. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that sounds like a wonderful way to grow up. No, it's just, I think sometimes they're a symbol of something that meant a bond between, you know, the two people would share the deceased and the one left behind. Um, with animals, I, I hear of birds. Actually, I've heard of birds more than anything else. Sometimes owls, different things. And I don't think it's as much that um, uh, the, um, the person that's died takes over or becomes um, the bird, but I think the the loved one can help send or direct the animals to people and i don't know why birds is so often i'm and i'm not going to say there aren't other things as well but it seems to be the stories i've heard i've heard of owls quite a few times crows yeah. often um, Crow, crows definitely and um yeah the the, the sort of the it sounds a bit, uh, the, the the darker looking sort of the birds the 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 the, the COVID or the, the, it's COVID not COVID co not COVID COVID family which is your blackbirds your jackdaws your rooks your ravens they're the mm -hmm. COVID family and we get because I know that only because they, we get them all the time around Stonehenge that's like right. the most most regular um, I saw a message pop up then from um, uh, Sharon um, Barkley saying. Um, sorry to hear about your dad. Thank you very much, Sharon. That's really kind of you. Sorry, yeah, I just saw that pop up now on the screen. <laughs> right. No, I, I, I have, I have ultimate power with this um, software. It's People amazing. Write in and I can click on it and it'll show up. So I don't very know how cool. it works. I just um, point and click and see what happens. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm up for the ride, William. Let's, let's, let's do this. That's okay. Yeah. No, it's. Um, I, I don't think it's um, anything. I, I think it is a natural, a real phenomenon. And I'm like you, I'm very skeptical, no matter, even though I believe in a lot, but it's yeah. through experience. And wild animals don't work that way. Uh, I also know you, I know you're not creating a story that wasn't accurate. And I mean, you it feels a bit weird for me to tell it, William, to be honest with you, because I'm um, certainly within the time zone team. I've got a bit of a reputation as Captain um, Skeptical when it comes to the, uh, this, that sort of stuff. And, mm -hmm. and I think that helps us as a team when we're doing our tours and stuff, because it's, it wouldn't be helpful if we were all like super like, Ooh, it, it, you need yin to yang and all that sort of stuff with that. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm very open minded. Right. And yeah. And I, 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 I I'd, I'd hate to not but yeah that's that's something that kind of rocks my world a bit I mean it, it's mm -hmm. it's when it's very easy as a human to sort of like close your off self off from things like that um right. if if you don't want to be receptive to it and then maybe make a grief or whatever you want to call it when you lose someone super close to you suddenly you, you find yourself sort of oh I, I might be I'm I, I'm I'm searching for answers. That's the, maybe the way of putting it. I'm searching for answers. I'm trying to think of solutions. I'm trying to find what's going on. And, right. Um, and that, uh, yeah. So that, that again, my super skeptical is coming out. So I'm like, I'm like, I really want that Robin to be my dad. That would be amazing. How cool would that be? Some kind of yeah. animal reincarnation thing. But at the same time, I'm thinking to myself, well, come on, man. <laughs> you know, it's and it's it. Yeah, I'm just. 
I cool. I don't know that it would be your dad. That's awfully fast turnaround. It could be. Yeah. It, yeah. It really could be. But I think more than likely what it is is your dad sending of sending somebody who can give you some comfort and let yeah, like a message. Is, yeah, and let you know your dad is thinking of you and he's he's around you. It's a symbol of him being around and with you anyway. In fact, he's right behind you. Um, no, I'm sorry. I don't mean. I don't mean. To. No, no, no. That that's interesting. You say that. That's it. I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm actually um, sat on top of my. I, uh, as I sat the bench, uh, my 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 chair that I'm sat on here is actually sat over my father's saxophone, which is a bit weird, but true. Um, but yeah, so that's the that's that's the thing for me, William, because for that for for me with my super scientific historical, let's be very mm -mm -mm about everything, whatever mm -mm -mm is. Um, right. Yeah, I, that, I I found myself searching for answers in that way. It's, it's very interesting, um, and I and I know that people are searching for answers all the time. Now, I you know I I lost my father a few years ago now, but sadly every day somebody loses somebody, and um, they too will be searching for answers. And I, I I've always been fascinated, as as you know, I've always been fascinated by that side of things. Mm -hmm. um, I've I've got a kind of background in magic is it's, it, if you can call it that sort of like um, uh, what we call table hopping and sort of after dinner stuff and I've, I've always enjoyed doing magic but one of the things that fascinates me about magic is the level well that, in some cases the very high skilled level of how can I say it? um uh, bs you know what I mean there's a lot of <laughs> There's a lot of ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> look what's right. happening here, and meanwhile, I I swindled you two minutes ago, and I've just bought this wonderful story, and I love that, and I've I've always really enjoyed that, but it makes you so skeptical, it makes you um, it it's almost awful in some ways because it doesn't make you believe anything. You become you be like, oh, that was this, and you know, you can explain you can explain everything with I don't know, smoke and mirrors, whatever, right. whatever way you want to put it. And, and there's an awful lot of that out there and a lot of fakery. And yeah, for me, yeah. I believe in what I believe in because I've had physical direct experience that I can't explain away. Yeah. yeah. And that's beautiful. And that is what counts. And that's much more important than all the smoke and mirrors. And, 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 and there's a, a million, there's more than a million fake sources nowadays that are just piped into us from every direction. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to try and, bat away that 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 side of stuff I, I one of the great joys about researching is 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 getting to the, the bottom of things like that you know finally clearing away the clouds of yeah and 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 getting to the getting to the um end of the story i, I i'm sure you've probably heard of him but i I've, I've talked to david cook about him a couple of years ago but um that so there's well i've always loved um houdini i've been a big fan of houdini and 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 the way that he was a fantastic illusionist and a fantastic magician, but he was obsessed. Perhaps it, in some way, not I'm nowhere near as obsessed as he was, but he wanted to just try and try and find that line between um, showmanship and truth and honesty. And I just, that, yeah, I've always found it interesting. And that's one of the reasons I like you, William, because I I, I know you speak from the heart, and, and I like that. That's that's well, really really cool. I appreciate that very much. And um, Houdini is a fascinating character actually and somebody who wanted very much for the afterlife to be true a hundred percent yeah and um i don't think he ever really did get what he was looking for that way did he well the, the well the houdini story is fascinating in, in, in so many different directions but yeah he, he basically became obsessed um with uh contacting his mother after she passed right and and he um he, he would offer he offered massive rewards for people who who could actually contact her or um, prove that they contacted her and and offered prizes various different prizes um, and and nobody ever really did there were code words that he he died after he died he had a special code word that was a secret between him and his wife that um, various different sort of mediums would try and um, get this code word from from him. I think they tried for 10 years or something like because Houdini died on Halloween as well, which adds to the mysticism. He, he died on the 31st of October, 
after right. getting um he got a terrible infection after a student punched him in in the, in the stomach while he was laid down on a chaise lounge with a broken ankle apparently but um it's because basically houdini's uh, one of many houdini's tricks was um to take a punch from pretty much anyone in the audience oh. and because of his outrageous core strength he could right. take a punch from anyone if he was tensed up and ready right. but the story goes that he was led down after a show relaxing uh, wow. with a broken ankle which he'd broken in the water tub a couple of days before and um uh, the way it's described it in the in some of the stories is sort of like american jocks american athlete studenty types so they're like right. proper well, come on and they say is it true mr houdini you can take a punch from anybody and he, before he even had a chance to say yes this guy jabbed him and it called him uh it caused him about three days later peritonitis i think that's right. the word uh -huh. um and he had a massive temp yeah yeah massive temperature show must go on carried on performing and 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 sadly died from it but yeah. his 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 main obsession was uh, before his death but you know the years before his death was trying to prove um some of the most popular psychics at the times to be frauds and he would right. put on disguises uh he would turn up at various different mediums um seances and he would then pull off his disguise with a lawyer with him and go ha ha you did it like this and he was very famous for doing it there's a there's an incredibly famous case with a lady medium who would perform completely naked and she would um it uh, ectoplasma would ectoplasm would a, a, a appear on the table and it was all this sort of stuff would happen and he uh -huh. exposed her i forget her name now um and also with houdini there's a tie-in with uh, arthur conan doyle and arthur conan doyle who was um, massively into spiritualism and a big sort of again i guess um sort of the the, the counterbalance to houdini's skepticism right and they were great friends and they went around touring america one talking one night about how you know spiritualism was the way forward and the other talking the next night saying it's a load of bunkum and they would right. sell out both nights and it was a very clever little deal they had they were great great friends um i i i heard a lot about them falling out and there is they did fall out for a bit but i don't know how much of that was just to increase the ticket sales as they 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 toured around america and canada and um mm -hmm. yeah they were they were very very popular with their tours but yeah houdini's a fascinating guy missed his mum so much that he offered a huge prize Anybody who could prove contact with his mum, he would pay out the prize. Anyone could do it, and nobody ever got the prize. Nobody's ever. And I think, in some way, that prize still exists. I, I, you might know more about it than me, William. I don't know. They're, they're, I think there is some sort of sort of um, the Houdini Association or something like that offer a prize for anyone who can conclusively prove. Da 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 da. -da. There's, there's, right. uh, there are various different uh, bits and pieces, but That's yeah, awesome. I. Yeah, I kind of picked up that story about uh, yeah about four or five years ago um, uh -huh. when I was researching one of our, our tours. We did a a tour. Where I did quite a lot of magic, uh, um, a walking tour around Salisbury, and I did quite a lot of magic. And we talked about um, I think it was called Rose Cons and Vagabonds, and it was it was all about um, deception and okay. honesty and the fine lines there between. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Um that might be a good segue actually into the tours you're you're starting up again yeah I, I i had a meeting with frog and ruby last night which was fantastic really positive um it's very difficult again so we're in in in, in the uk at the moment we're we're with the situation where rather it's, it feels a bit totalitarian but it's for our own safety and all that sort of stuff right. we, we 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 are waiting to find out i'm allowed to have six people on a tour at the moment so okay tours are coming back together so you can uh we've got a lovely new website uh it's called timezoneproductions.com and if you go on to there you can book myself frog or ruby um for a tour but we're only allowed six people at the moment i, I think it's about another month to go and then we can up the numbers a bit more so we're just and uh, quite on quite honestly trying our best to just uh get ready for when it starts again. I've, I've written a brand new tour or the Lake House uh, and Lake Down tour, which I'm really proud about. I've, I've been doing so much research. It's taken me about two years to write and it's the first kind of tour I've done on my own. So okay. although, although Frog and Ruby are involved um, and it's still going through time zone, mm -hmm. I'd love to get, and, and, and it's actually, it looks like we might be doing a little bit of a, a mini festival around this for the Woodford Valley about the history of the Woodford Valley, which is 
where this this walks um, based. I should say to people who have no idea where the Woodford Valley is, it backs right onto Stonehenge. So Stonehenge is um, there's the wonderful stone circle, and there's a little field, a triangle field, triangular field called Monument Field. Right. And then as you move a little bit further away from that, the the greater landscape is in the areas of sort of uh, Woodford Lake, um, uh, eight, uh, Durrington, um, Lark Hill. There's, it's 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 quite a, a large set of villages that include all the uh, burial mounds, uh, tumulis, um, various different causeways and coal enclosures, um, uh, encampments. It's all sorts of crazy stuff that's going around off at the villages where we live. Um, so I've I've written a tour that takes you from uh, Lake, which is a beautiful, uh, beautiful little village, about two miles from Stonehenge, and okay. you and you and you follow through the woodland past a, a, a great number of um, barrows, and I'll explain what was found inside the barrows and the stories behind them and who dug them, um, leading up to Stonehenge and then, and then back in the history of the village and all that sort of thing. It um, oh. honestly is fascinating i'm really proud of what i've done I and can't i can't to take no, I, tour. I can't wait to start showing people but it's been a long wait and i I've, i'm at the stage now where i just need to get my last three or four laminates done um uh, I, i've been very lucky because there's a, a wonderful farm called spring bottom farm i need to name drop them because spring bottom farm are integral to this okay. so um, spring bottom farm they they own the land where we have the normanton barrow group the lake down barrow group the willsford group um, as well as that, we have um, several uh, World War One airfields, which are no longer mm -hmm. used. Uh, bits of railway, bits of old um, disused army camps, hospitals. Also, there's a massive story to this landscape, and right. all of it is private property and very much not normally able to be toured. But uh, the the lovely Bailey family they they contacted me a couple of fam a couple of uh, years ago and asked me if we could maybe do something and yeah we're ready to run and i'm, I'm really proud about it because it's the first time i've done a tour away from the city as well i'm a country boy at heart and it's a right. it's 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 more like it's about a two and a half mile hike stroke tour stroke you'll never see anything like it before in your life it's amazing it's like a lunarscape out there um, well and this is the type of thing that fascinate me the most i mean give me the prehistoric and it will in in england especially now parts of the world the pre there's history going back that i mean written history going back that far mesopotamia some of those places but i love those sites and the people and what we do know and what we don't know and my own readings of them and i just that's the kind of thing that gives me goosebumps and chills and yeah um another reason i gotta get over there again at post pandemic yeah well the 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 strange thing about the landscape over that side of the monument is it's pretty much untouched and it's it's um you can't even see a telegraph pole it's in, wow. in every in every direction you look you can't see a telegraph pole you can't see anything but rolling countryside and these amazing burial mounds which all have line of sight towards stonehenge um it's yeah it's it's quite it it's quite eye opening and and it's not and it's and then we've got this um I'm not sure if you've heard of uh, a great bustard, William, but we've we've got this wonderful great bustard that keeps on hanging around the area at the moment, which is a, it was, it was a creature that was actually extinct in in England up until about twelve years ago, where it was re reintroduced. Okay, and uh, we had I think we had thirty Russian pairs of the. But imagine how can I put it? What sort? Of, about the size of a Canadian goose, sort of size bird, really really big, but looks like a pheasant. So. A Canadian goose-sized pheasant-type bird that goes around and is, um, and we've got we've got quite a few of those which are in the landscape around there at the moment. So it's, so it's sort of like nature, history, um, yeah, it's uh, beautiful views. And uh, we, we I've been talking a bit with Spring Bottom Farm about they have wonderful produce there as well. They have um, they they have all these sort of uh, traditional varieties of um, from cattle to saddleback pigs and all this sort of stuff. So they're very keen to try and maybe summer solstice or something like that to have some kind of uh, barbecue at the end of the tour um, featuring their, right. their yummy food and all that sort of stuff. Oh, so. that sounds fantastic. In yeah. some way, it, 
people on the tour to even buy things to take home or something yeah well I, again I, I hate to keep saying spring bottom but yeah they they, they do have some great stuff they're a, they're, they're a proper farm um, just down the road and they they said rather than it going off to some nameless supermarket somewhere they they, they sell to the to locals in the in the area so I, I literally had some of their jam on my toast this morning and it's jolly good excellent, <laughs> excellent. Oh, uh, this is fabulous. Now, this valley, is this part of where um, they think the stones were brought in from Stone so, Ridge? Yeah. Is that... So, the, yeah, so the stones, uh, the Woodford Valley is uh, the kind of the other side of that. So okay. um, we're only a couple of miles away um, from Stonehenge, but we're the other side of that. So we're more Salisbury side. Everything okay. else is, is, is happening a bit more northern um, with, with dragging stones and that side of thing or a bit more... Uh, so yeah, so the the blue stones. They, I think you probably saw that recently. There's been this uh, talk of the, the the how the blue stones uh, brought to Stonehenge the the ones from Wales, right? Uh, from the Preseli Mountains, the smaller ones. Basically, right. I'm, I'm sure you can remember the the, the the smaller stones, which are about six seven foot tall, right? Maybe four no, that, four and a half tons. I I was con confused a little bit about all of this coming out as new now because I mean that was something that was talked about. I think when I was there, I mean it seemed like that's been known for a while that... well it's no it and, and you're, you're right but it's it's, it's somewhere between um, knowing something and proving something i think okay. i think okay. it's i think what's happened is that the, the 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 smart money was and now they've knocked it out of the park and they proved it um, con okay. uh, conclusively um as, and, and the same with the sarsons so the sarsons and the bluestones we now know where they've come from we right. we know a lot more about um how how they got here I, I think I'm pretty sure I, I've got to be careful, but I'm pretty sure glaciation has been completely poo pooed now. Right. Um, and that's always been a little bit skeptical. People have been very skeptical about the idea that the idea of glaciers bringing these stones and Mount Crawford. Out. But there's so many books written about Stonehenge, so many theories written about Stonehenge, you, you never know. You know, that, you know that, that's one of the most frustrating things I've always found is that I could find a book to confirm or deny most things that we talk about William. it's just <laughs> it's uh it's 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 knowing where what i mean in the context of my employment and i'm working there for english heritage they they are that which who i love of course um very much don't take me um yes no, I, they, I do too I'm, <laughs> I'm a big fan of english heritage no they are cool and they're doing really good stuff um but in the context of stonehenge they have their story that they tell and and, and, it's, and it's accurate don't get me wrong I, I i have nothing really to to say that i don't agree with what they're saying but when you get to slightly more controversial sides of things there there's a narrative that has to be followed where it's be that stonehenge tunnel or uh, i don't know battle of beanfield or or things where you know the, the history of stonehenge is slightly more murky um you, the, 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 there's a narrative that that's set out and and that's only right I, I think in some ways and um because an organization like that which is a fantastic organization looking after all these wonderful places can't really take a opinion like that no but, you've got to have something that's got a little bit more of a foundation to it i would think and as long as they're flexible so that when new information, new facts are, which they are, they can change the next. Which they the are, narrative. which you know, my, I have to take my hat off to them. They are fantastically that way. Yeah. And, and and when I when I first started working in the English heritage, um, it, I was almost taught, uh, things have changed a lot. But I was almost told that I couldn't talk about certain things okay. that now we're very happy to talk about. And and it's it was it was um, that was kind of interesting, but. I, th I think that the narrative has changed a little bit around around the site at the moment. It's it's interesting. We've got um, lots of different things happening with um, the tunnel happening not no not under Stonehenge, but nearby to Stonehenge. Right. There's the, there's the proposal for the tunnel, uh, which has been approved and looks quite likely to happen. And, and the head of the head of um, the woman in charge of either of the of Stonehenge Monument. Or of English Heritage, I can't remember which one is for the tunnel. I, I think no, the English Heritage National Trust, Highways England, uh, Wiltshire Council, uh, pretty much the government um, are for the tunnel. Uh, it's if you would ask locals, it's a bit of a mismatch. Uh, I think people who live 
in Amesbury aren't so happy. Right. But the people who live in the surrounding villages uh, seem a bit more happy with the tunnel, but it is a big thing. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I can't really generalize like that. That would be wrong. Um, it, there's, there's so many good, good reasons for the tunnel and there's so many bad reasons against the tunnel. So it's, it's, it's like the archeology. span Yeah. And that would be, yeah, that would be the, uh, I, I would say to that, the, the water table is, is yes. a concern for, for sites oh. like Blickmead um, right. and how that would affect the archeology. span That was that sink. And then I, I know that there would be a loss of archeology span by um, drilling an entrance, uh, an exit to the tunnel, but in some ways, at least it would be, at least they would investigate the archaeology and they'd look right. at it and they'd, they'd record the finds, mm -hmm. which isn't ha going to happen if that doesn't happen. But right. so, yeah, I'm very torn. I, I, I would hate to, I'd hate to see Blickme damaged. I kind of, th I've, I've seen accidents happen on the 303. I've, I've worked, I've worked in and around the, the monument long enough to have seen some pretty nasty things happen on that road. And I've driven it several times and it's a, it can be a real pain. It can be quite a, yeah a snarled mess it, it can be a snarled mess and but at the same time that snarled mess represents uh a god-given right view to many people in in the uk who that represents the beginning of their holiday that represents uh, you, you get the truck as you go past and just bah, bah, as they go past and you know you say i can it's but it, it's the road's only been there since but i think as of just just after World War Two, or just before World War Two, the road started being um, okay. much more heavily used. There's a, the A three four four was used a bit more before that, but I don't know if that matters really. It's just, yeah, I guess it isn't. To I'm I live so close to Stonehenge that, and I work as well. I work there, but it's 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 it, it's my destination for work. For thousands and thousands of people who drive past, it's like. Ah, oh, look, we're halfway to where we're going. It's Stonehenge. It's you know, it's slow yeah. down, take a picture. Da, da, da. It's um, and that is lovely as well. I guess that's part. That's part of the tradition of it. Um, and whether boring a two and a half mile tunnel through the landscape is is the right thing to do is is questionable. I, I honestly, I kind of, I think I approve. I don't know. I'd like to see the landscape returned to. I was talking to you about the Wilswood group, the Lake group, um, uh, th these these amazing barrow groups. I'd like to see them reunited with the monument, which they're not because they're divided by this very heavy dual carriageway, which is, in case anyone who's listening to this doesn't know, uh, Stonehenge is um, pretty much kept away from the rest of the landscape by a very, very heavily congested, um, busy, busy road. Not quite a motorway, but a very, a very busy stretch of road. Right. Um, and the proposal to remove it maybe it would be great to be able to work walk across that area but the counter argument to that is you're robbing me of my right to see stonehenge i've i've been able to see stonehenge ever since i was a kid and i went on my holidays why can't i see it now i've got to go down a tunnel and it probably wasn't helped by an, an april fool i read which was talking about it them having massive mcdonald's super stores at either end and a 10 pound charge to go down the tunnel and stuff like that so there's a lot of local ooh, when they yeah, when they build the tunnel, this one. is going to be that, that's going to be there, and it's going to be yeah, yeah it's going to be the McDonald. I think they said at the McDonald's Stonehenge Superstore or something like that, <laughs> but, which is not true. But right. you right. put that seed, that element of um, that idea in someone's head, and it's going to stick, isn't it? I've just done it now. Don't yeah. believe what I said. If anyone's watching, <laughs> that's not true. It's not true. <laughs> It, people are so willing and happy to jump on to any kind of a negative conspiracy that um, just pops out there. It's it boggles my mind sometimes. But and it, yeah, no, you're you're right. It's like a, a people's personal echo chambers, and and mm -hmm. uh, and if something seems to be amplifying that, then you'll jump on. Oh, wow. I guess I'm probably guilty of it sometimes. I think we all are. It's again, this human nature, but you hear something and you th that sounds right and you're like, hmm. But yeah, I, I'm a researcher, so I try my very best to make sure I research anything before I right. I, I would share it. Or so I'd, I'd feel mortified if I'd shared something that was properly, properly no, no truth to it at all. I'd be quite gutted. 
I'm the same way. It's, uh, you know, my bachelor's is history. Back in the days when we used, I probably wrote 100 pages a term in papers on a manual typewriter. And you wow. sit in the library and you go through books and microfiche and you know your sources are genuine and yeah. not something made up offline. And um, So important. It's so it important. Is. I'm going to have to have a drink of my drink, sorry. Yeah. Um, no, absolutely. Um, speaking of libraries, you have a book out. Well, I have a book out. Yeah, that's an interesting point. So, um, yeah, I, I created a book uh, with a local school, and I was well. I, became, I was offered the chance to become the um, writer residence for English and Heritage at Stonehenge uh, about two years ago now, something like that. It was a great project. It was fantastic. I had so much fun. I got a group. Of, I got two years of school children to uh, write stories with me. It's a bit more than that, to be honest. We we took them on various different visits, and I. I treated them to tales and various different storytellers, various scenarios. I took them out in the pouring rain to, f it's quite rude really. I took them out in the pouring rain, absolutely heaving down with rain. And I made them tell me what they felt like while I told them stories about, and then we went out there, we went to the, um, we went to the museum in the, in the, in the, in our huts and we lit fires inside and we did very spooky oh, storytelling. And we, 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 we took them sort of like through various, the idea was to get them to, feel the stories or to try and so when they told me stories they'd be saying i you know i was cold and it was the noise was dripping across you know just trying to get more so yeah it was a great project it was really really good fun but i got properly caught out by i think we all did really the team got caught out by um everything that's happened with covid and all that sort of stuff so right the book the book exists i've actually got it here that the, here is the book so I don't know. I can't do it from the camera. There. So that, that's the book. Um, so I, I work with the work with the kids, and we created this fantastic book. Um, various different stories that I wrote with the kids, um, and I got all the we got them to illustrate it for me, and it's a lovely little book. And the idea was originally it may well be stalled at uh, Stonehenge and the children, and we we're going to have a big exciting thing with it, but it didn't work out like that, sadly. Um, so I wasn't able to. Gift the I wasn't able to give the children their stories as we were going to have a big celebration event. So they they have got their story books and they've got their stories, but I wasn't able to. We were going to have a big celebration and we were going to be on the radio and it was going to be fantastic. The BBC were going to be involved and, but yeah, so that's what happened with the book, William. Really. So as it stands, um, I don't. I'm not sure if it's going to be available for general release. I don't think it will be. I hope it will be. I hope oh, that I, hope I do so. another I one. It. I want I want everyone to have one. I'm very proud of it. Um, yeah, uh, but well, sadly I sent you that a message saying I, want I saw one. it I and I was an like, copy. I was yeah. trying to see if I could get you one. Um, yeah. But as as it stands, the the only people who have copies of of the book are the school children. Every every single child who wrote a story with me has a copy of the book with their story inside it. So I didn't get rid of any of the stories. I kept every single. So I think. It's 65 stories, something like that, from the school children, and each one's got there. So, and, mm. yeah, and they've got the most fantastic names from Merlin the Angry Wizard. Um, uh, there's actually, there's quite a lot of Pokemon. I think I failed slightly. There's far too many Pokemon feature in this book. There's, there's at least three Pokemon who feature, um, which wasn't really part of the Legends of Stonehenge. But the no. story, the, the, part of the idea was for them to create their own legends. So if 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 little Tommy wanted to put a Pokemon in his story, I wasn't going to stop him. To be honest no. with you, <laughs> right? Because that's his, what he relates to instead of Merlin. Yeah. So well, they're all they're all different stories. So I, I had to make sure they didn't tell the same story sixty five right. times. So we've we've got lots of time portals and unicorns. Um, we've got all sorts. Um, one or two of the stories are quite deep and really quite moving. I, I was working with the age ranges from. I think my oldest was nine years nine years old, which sounds really young, but what you can get them to do um, when we were editing them down was quite incredible. We got some, um, and I, I basically told them lots of myths and legends, worked with uh, worked with their storyboards, um, and then we all uh, produced the book, and the teachers helped us not as well, to be honest with you. So, but it's sad that it's not. It was always, the dream was always that it was going to be available in the gift shop, but the gift shop still. Oh, maybe they get no the gift shop's open again now i don't want to give a falsehood the gift shop opened on monday so okay. 
we we were hope, hopeful um, that we can get lots of people back in there. Good. Yeah, because, and that's something too. I mean, for people out there, and these places are so expensive to maintain. Yeah. And it's not just Stonehenge. It's the entire English Heritage um, National Trust, the properties, the private, the government-owned, whatever, the sites. It doesn't matter if it's a stone circle or a castle or a manor house or a ruin. Um, support the organizations. Go to the gift shops. They've got fantastic books. And they've got a lot of other things that help support the organizations that keep so much of this fabulous history alive and preserve it for the rest of us you know no um, they, you're you're right William it's just I guess uh, stone it, people say to me oh Stonehenge doesn't take much to look after but Stonehenge kind of is maybe it's the almost like the jewel in the crown with the with the English heritage the way that the organization works because uh, a lot of people come to Stonehenge and, and, and not a lot of people go to somewhere like Old Wardour Castle, which is a well a, a, another Fantastic e place. A, a wonderful site. But yes. a busy day for those lovely guys there. And Ian uh, is a great manager there. He, you know, if they see 150 people, they're, they're like, wow, we've, we've had a crazy day today. Um, yeah. But the maintenance costs, I would argue, for Old Wardour Castle are are probably quite huge you know the the mortar right. it, it needs it needs protecting it's 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 constantly I, it, I was there for a summer a couple of years ago and it wasn't unusual to find bits of castle that had fallen off over the over the overnight mm -hmm. you know just tiny bits of rubble but you know that's that's what happens when they're that old right um, so to keep these 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 structures stable costs a huge amount of money i was i was lucky enough to go to I, I stayed at Dover Castle for a week for my fortieth birthday, and it was the oh. most. It's the most incredible castle, but it's vast. It's huge. It, you know, yes. I was there for a week, and I truly don't believe I, I explored it all. And and I was there day and night, like staying at the castle. Uh, uh, you know, going for walks at ten o'clock in the night, uh, and, and I and I I still didn't feel like I'd fully explored the castle. It was just such a vast site. And the maintenance that goes into that, because they're listed buildings, they need to be right. protected. They need to be uh, preserved for for future generations. If mm -hmm. it, it's quite it's quite staggering what, what what goes into it. And 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 again, with, when you look at say a, a, a tapestry or a painting or something like that, that needs to be brushed in, in a very particular way. A, a book needs to be conserved in a, in a special way, otherwise it will be lost. It will go. And exactly. And more often than not, in private collections, perhaps certainly you know personal collections that people have. I mean, I've been guilty of this myself. You know, you you, you have a book you like, and then you leave it in the corner. And you pick it up a few years later, and oh, it's got a bit damp, or oh no, and you know, it, it they're, they're they're very volatile things. These bits of history, and you um, certainly paintings are oof, ever ever so volatile, and textiles, and um, I don't generally deal with stones and bones, which. Uh, I don't, you know, the stones aren't so volatile. The bones are more, uh, we're worried about humidity. Right. Um, that can be a big problem. Uh, it can form uh, sort of micro cracks, that sort of stuff. We have uh, it uh, in the museum, uh, in the, the it, well, it's Stonehenge, for example, in the cabinets, we have uh, Miko uh, cupboards, which will tell you the humidity, the the, the lux values, uh, so the brightness, the, the level of brightness from the light. Um, and all that uh, temperatures so that you know that you're within parameters and mm -hmm. very often uh, if you have a temporary exhibition you've got loan objects if if you're not keeping with those in those parameters those those objects will be taken back or you're you're you know you've your breach of contract really exactly you know if, if you're if you're lent a valuable ivory object that's just, you know from ten thousand you know whatever right. and it cracks on your watch then uh, what is so yeah you've got to be so so very very careful in that, in that sort of way so micro monitoring is something even with our stones and bones we're really hot on um, up at the visitor center but somewhere like dover castle somewhere well you know any of the collections of the national trust a, they just did a big restoration didn't they on dover castle yeah oh it's fantastic what they've done with dover castle they they really have the the, the, the tower itself um it's they've 
where areas were completely inaccessible, they've they've put in new wooden. Well, they've replaced the old wooden floors, oak floors where you can go up. Staircases have been replaced, and you can go right the way to the top. Um, and wow. it's a one. It's it's an incredible sight. I'll be, to be honest, it's 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 the jewel in the crown. My personal jewel in the crown of English heritage is um, portfolio. What they've got, everything they look after. I mean, I love Stonehenge, and I always will. But right. wow, if you if you just want to have your mic, because you've got. With Dover Castle, you you you've got um, you've got a Roman lighthouse, you've got a Victorian um, um, reinforcement of a of a of a Henry the Second um, fort, which has got World War II um, sort of literally D Day, uh, circa D Day sort of um, base camp. How can I put it? A bunker complex. Right. Underneath that, you've got a nuclear bunker complex, which is called the Dumpy Level. Which they found out was useless because it's all chalk cliffs and chalk is very porous and they didn't realize that it would be useless for nuclear but they, they built it anyway to start off with but it's, it's got all these periods of history built on top of each other right and it's, there would have been the napoleonic war um yeah. periods as well i would think yeah yeah it's and yeah you just if as, as I, it's, that's the crazy thing i'd love to, i'd love to take you there william you'd, you'd really enjoy david castle um i'd like to yeah no you, you honestly it's 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 got it's got so much, so much a depth of history. It's been important since the Romans. It's been important to Henry. It's been important right. to the Victorians. It's been important during World War Two, and, and you know, and it continues to be important now. But the the distance from Dover to 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 mainland France is is just under thirty miles. Um, so it's it's long considered our most vulnerable point, and all that sort of stuff. I took um, the hovercraft from Dover to Calais. So, oh, cool! Yeah, very that cool. Dates, that dates how long ago it was that I was in that area, and uh, yeah, excuse me, and I, I didn't get to the castle, um, but um, it's a stop from a distance, and that was it. So uh, that would be, I want to very much. I had no idea you could stay in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's there's about five or six. Um, no, I think it's five properties that English Heritage have there that you can you can hire from the Sergeant's Mess to one of the places was incredibly hot. It was right next to the Sergeant's Mess, and the and the story was that I was told was that uh, the in in the wall in the, in the wall opposite the Sergeant's Mess, just above this building that you could hire, um, that, that a lady had fallen out with the, the 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 master of the castle, and she'd been bricked up in this wall and, and left there and her wailing could still be heard and all that. You know what I mean? It was all that uh -huh. sort of every single folklore. And it was, yeah, but it was, I, I'm, again, I'm very hard to rattle. I'm very, very hard to rattle in places like that. But about two o'clock in the morning, walking around Dover Castle without a flashlight, just wandering around, just thinking, what, seeing what I could see. And I did get properly spooked out. It was, it is a very, very imposing place. And, you know, massively high walls. And castles aren't meant to be friendly. They, they, no. you know, they're inherently nasty places with deep, sharp edges, and you know, you got to be careful where you go. So, it's yeah, still so. A mil an active military site, isn't it? There, there, you might, there are there is a military presence there, yes, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's it's a symbolic one. I think it's entirely okay. in symbolic one. Just like, it, but yes, you're right. There is there is one. It's uh, there's another. I think there's Fort William up in in. Um, up near Loch Ness in Scotland, I went to, which is a similar type thing, where there is still like a, a garrison of, of of a few people there type thing, but it's mainly, okay. you know, sort of symbolic type thing. Yeah, which is, yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind of the way, kind of the way they work it. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. See, there's so much. I spent years trying to figure out how I could legally move over there. There's so much that I love of, and uh, on those islands, and I'm still trying to figure it out, but uh, um, just more trips I have to take. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I, I, I don't know, I, I often think about where I'd like to end up. Per personally, I'd, I, I really like, I, I don't know, have you, have you been to Italy? Have you ever been to Italy, no. William? Oh, Not yet. I, I think that's, I don't know, there's, there's so much history in Italy. You just, yes. You just you can't walk anywhere without stumbling over it. I'd like to I'd like to spend an extended time in Italy, just 
yeah, investigating bits and pieces over there. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm quite in love with the Mediterranean, to be honest with you. Maybe that's because we've just come in, we've had a quite a cold winter and all that. We're coming to spring now, though. It's all full of positivity here. We've had a lovely day of sunshine here, and it looks like you've got the sun shining on you there as well. Oh, it's been gorgeous. Um, the last week or so, I've had to start watering the garden. Um, the air conditioning's running in the house. Um, Fabulous. You know, it's, it's nice. And it does, after the long dreary year we've had um it's nice to have something a little sunny a little hopeful yeah um, and unfortunately sometimes people get a little too carried away with it and forget that we still need to uh be aware of the pandemic and follow certain rules and yeah numbers will spike but um, I think we're I think we're all a little bit worried about that over here now because we we've got to the stage now where you know we've seen yeah you know, we're 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 a, a nation of about sixty five million people and we've been seeing well in the bad times it was you know it was death death tolls of over a thousand people a day um, so yeah it's and we've got now got to I think the last. I know certainly in Salisbury, but my, my my local hospital, we haven't got any COVID cases in there at all at the moment. Oh, good. Which is so far from the other end of the spectrum than we, we were a few months ago. But we've been heavily locked down. And right. and and now the kids are back at school where where literally Monday we, we came out of lockdown stage. Oh gosh, it's very confusing here. I'm not sure if it is how it is in the States. It but but well, we, we're in, at, in, the, in the States we each state is different, and in my state, each county is different. So right. So what? So what are the forgive forgive my curiosity, William? What what are the regulations for you at the moment? So are you allowed to gather outside with friends? Or are you allowed to have people over? What's the story? Um, you're supposed to be able to um, gather outside with masks. Um, you can have friends if you've got vaccines. I think. Um, but you're still supposed to use masks. Uh, 25% occupancy in restaurants, bars. Um, but a week ago, it was 50%. But our numbers oh, shot up. So they cut us back down again. You know, it's that's changes. interesting. Yeah. Um, schools uh, and all the after school activities are causing a lot of the spike in numbers. Um, a lot of younger people and we've got your variation they call it the yeah K variation that's spreading so easily yeah. yeah that's that seems to be the big thing isn't it it's a, a few months ago that we were hearing about that and we we're like what, the, what are they on about and now it's yeah it's everywhere isn't it it's it's one mm -hmm. of the most virulent forms we're, the, we're really worried over here they talk to us about the south african variant they're really worried about us and the, uh, the South African variant, and they talk about that a lot. And they're very concerned about keeping that out of the UK, which I'm guessing must mean it's maybe just as even a little bit more um, scary than the other one. Could be. But I we, think we, the vaccine works on it, though. Yeah. I, no, that's it. Yeah. Back to that word efficacy again, aren't we? That, yes. That we, yes. Efficacy. Uh -huh. Word of the year, I think. I, mean, I, never, yes. I never used the word ever in my life before, uh, 2020, and now uh, in 2021 as well, we're using the word efficacy quite a lot. But, you know, if it, it we, we are in quite a good place in the UK in, in, with the amount of vaccines that, we're, that are being put into people's arms, and that is that is good, and I, I, I can definitely see the positivity in that, and that's, that's a great thing. We've got... Um, a quite high um, uptake in confidence in vaccines in the UK as well. So people okay. just tend to just take them uh, rather than yeah. it's, it's, it's more often than not people will take them. Uh, you know, we don't have, well, there, of course we have anti-vaxxers, but we don't have quite as many um, as, as in we some countries. So I know many of them. I know you do. And I, I and, and I respect people's decision if they want to make that decision, but it's, it's difficult because it, yeah, it's, it's a, yeah. it's a, a national health issue and yeah. at least I can respect it more if they're making the decision off of good scientific fact than if it's um, fake nonsense. Um, yeah. But 
in a civil society, we have a responsibility for each other. You know, it's in this country, especially, and especially so far out west where I am, a lot of the people coming and settling originally were pretty independent. Now, they had to work together to survive, but there was still a, a certain independent attitude and it's all about me. And we have a lot of that left in right. people not necessarily caring how their action affects the others. Yeah. Yeah. I get, I, 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 I get slightly concerned about, I don't know if that's, if people are being selfish or if they're, but I, I you know, I, I haven't been offered my jab yet. I will take my jab up and I know, and then my wife will, and I know that most of the people I know will, but it's that one or two or three people who don't. And then I don't know, it's whether that will keep it resurging or maybe Bill Gates is putting a microchip in my arm and I don't know, and I'm wrong. And I'm, I'm going to be turned into some kind of robot. We, we, you know, that's, yeah, there's all these conspiracy theories here everywhere. Right. Don't you? It's just like, ah, uh huh. It's well, um, if we've got that kind of technology. That's fascinating. Yeah. I mean, I I, I, I could do with an update. Off, yeah, those needles are awfully small too. So this is kind of <laughs> tiny microchip. <laughs> no, exactly. But yeah, maybe maybe I need an upgrade. I could. Yeah. I could use a whole new circuit board. So you know, <laughs> I'm no, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so yeah. Now, what other projects do you guys have coming up? Um, you personally or Time Zone? Um, so but I guess uh, time zone, we had a great meeting last night. So we've been working with a company called Catherine Court Pictures. Um, and we are, because of what's been happening to COVID, we've, we've been putting some stuff back in the can. Um, so trying to make some good films, uh, some documentaries. So what Absolutely. will happen is hopefully, and I'm pretty sure it's going to happen, is over the next few months, you're going to see three um, documentaries pop up from time zone. Um, one will okay. be from Frog. Uh, one will be from Ruby and one will be from myself and we will be working with each other on these on these documentaries but yeah primarily each one will be one of our projects so mine will be the tale of Thomas Scammell mm -hmm. and that will be all about I'm, I, as I'm sure I've told you before about my one of my personal sessions about a particular landowner who uh, built up a mighty empire and then was found rather suspiciously with his head chopped off on a railway and I've I've been researching this story for years and years and i've got a lot of information and, and i've got various different theories and i can't wait to tell the story so there'll be a documentary about that yes. um ruby will i'm sure be doing a documentary about the haunch of venison she's got an upcoming book about the haunch of venison and i okay. think frog's gonna I, I i don't think it's gonna be teddy haskell i think frog's gonna be doing his he's got a new book which is very soon to be published called um supernatural salisbury that's it sorry i've got right. trying to remember the title then supernatural salisbury um and I'm pretty sure he will his documentary will be about that. But we'll be helping each other in the production. Uh, Ruby's got a, a really exciting um, play that she's working on as well at the moment, which is a sort of stage play, radio play that she's. I've I was um, reading through the the first no second draft of the script um, last night, um, trying to help help give any ideas. But she's fantastic. She doesn't need my help. She's brilliant. Yes, um, she is. she's she's written a really really good script um and yeah so we're, we're all keeping busy like that but it's yeah so the, the the big things to watch are um the the lake tour i think we're gonna run a, a salisbury tour as well will be happening probably in july we've okay. decided it's it's going to be um based around uh salisbury cathedral close so um we've done a tour before called close encounters uh which mm -hmm. was basically playing on the term close salisbury cathedral close and, and the famous sci-fi movie, uh, but uh -huh. yeah, we've 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 got a new tour which will be based around Salisbury Cathedral Close, which is can't, it's very difficult to try and keep people um, COVID confident, however you want it. So what we've decided to do is position ourselves at uh, three different positions within the Cathedral Close, and you'd come talk to me in in your in your bubble, and uh -huh. I will tell you a story, and then I'll send you on your way to Ruby, and she will tell you a story. And then you go after frog, and and the various groups will go around, and that way it means we can keep people um, secure and say, you know, confident that they're not, you know, mixing in strange bubbles and all that sort of thing. 
right. even though we've got an incredibly low COVID rate around Salisbury and all that sort of stuff now. Well, you so want to keep it that way. We yeah. certainly do. And we're not going to, and, and that's, I got quite annoyed with um, last um, Halloween, there were a number of uh, tour guides running tours around Salisbury picking up groups on Halloween and that was not the time to be doing it. We had really high rates yeah. and, and so time zone has, um, sorry, time zone productions, myself, Frog and Ruby, the, the tour guides who, who wander around Salisbury, the top hats have decided that, you know, we will calm it down until we're, we're confident things are a little bit better. And mm -hmm. it gives us the strength to keep writing. I mean, Frog's got some great stuff coming up. He's, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a talk, Frog's doing a talk, Ruby's doing a talk to the Bourne Valley History Society in a couple of weeks, which I think is going to be available online oh, um, on various different subjects. Just go to timezoneproductions.com and you can see what we're up to. Um, and I and, put it in uh, the chat, so um, providing my spelling is right, people have it so they can get it. Now, the book. Cool. Now, Ruby and Frog's books, will they be available? Um, <laughs> On, Ruby's on hoping there. to be published before uh, Ruby's will be available before Christmas, as I can tell. And I think Frogs will be too. Um, okay. Although I don't want to add any extra pressure to Ruby, I know Frogs will be because um, his previous book, um, uh, well, one of his many previous books he's written, uh, it, it was it's a huge Christmas um, stocking filler type hit. Um, right. So um, Haunted Salisbury uh, is a very very popular. I have it. Still, yeah, still sells still sells big numbers. Um, and this is sort of like a, I don't know if it's a sequel because he's going in different directions. He's got some great stuff. I've been happy to, con I've contributed a few bits and pieces, but not very much. And he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's just, he's a machine. He's a, a brother. Well, and people out there, the, the audience, I can't get across to you enough how brilliant these three are and what they produce with, with what they do and everything from books to the tours, I mean, it's it's breathtaking. It's it, you've got we have to a lot of fun and participate. You really do. Um, buy the books. Do the are the the videos? Are they going to be pay? Or are they going to be YouTube? Or no, we 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 we, did, we generally we make everything available. You can find actually there's um if you go onto YouTube if you go onto Time Zone or, or um, YouTube you can find there's there's quite a nice little um. Our Halloween special is on there. Um, we okay. filmed that with Catherine Court Pictures, and that's about um, 10, 15 minutes long or so you get to hear. Actually, I think I tell I tell the story of um, Thomas Scammell on there briefly. I think I've watched it. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's quite a good one to watch. Um, and you can, you can see sort of the stuff. But, again, that, under these COVID conditions, we've had to sort of back off a bit. So that's why we've got this lovely partnership with Richard from Catherine Court Pictures and the team there, that which means that we have the freedom to, to film and then uh, have it very very highly professionally edited and and then it goes off and it looks great and people can watch it for for free which is you know it's all it's all about the love of history not the love of the cash that's for us yeah and um the love of history really comes through and they know what they're doing with the research um there are a lot of people out there that say they love history but they don't have a clue how to research or understand or interpret or put together history so these three know <laughs> well i've learned a lot of a frog and ruby i'll be honest i feel like i feel like the apprentice of the team to be honest with you um okay. and it's it's great it's great to be part of the team but yeah frog is a legend ruby has yes. the, the most incredible memory and the most incredible researching ability and i'm i don't know i i, I kind of get on okay and I, I i i enjoy being with them and i've got the i've got the bonus of having stonehenge power behind me right and <laughs> that all helps it and helps me i'm gonna talk to the three of you to see about getting the three of you on again before long now that you're opened up a bit they'd love to i know they would i, I only spoke to them last night and i know they'd be very much up for it william they really would yeah. they'd love to because i don't get to see you three in person many right these days so at least i get to do it this way you know well we, we we're, we're planning on coming to oregon remember we're gonna we're gonna get the grand tour <laughs> no i'm just, it's we, were, we always want to offer yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll be there we'll be, when, when we can fly again my friend when 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 the skies are opened up to us again we'd be very very pleased to go over there and have you. okay uh, you've got to teach me about your local area. i want to tour excellent there's <laughs> a there's a lot here and uh, i know there is yeah it, it's very different than yours but 
Um, we do have a lot. And my house even has ghosts. So, you know, you can get this paranormal uh, just by going to bed at night. I like the sound of that. That yeah. sounds interesting. That yeah. sounds very cool. Things like the guest, the bed in the guest room, somebody will shake it. Um, people That happened twice wow. to a friend of mine um, from England who was staying there. Um, you see shadows walk across the door and stuff sometimes. Uh, one friend was staying and she woke up and saw my mother standing there. Oh, wow. Um, and so there's, I get footsteps in the living room when I'm in bed and I live alone. Um, <laughs> That's a bit crazy. And, That's cool. And the my parents had the house built. It's not like it's an old house. Nobody. That was going to be my next question was how old was your house or what was there before? 90, 94, 95. And it oh, was wow. all, it's in a subdivision that was a field when I was a kid. Oh, but there, there was activity before my parents died too. So it's not just them. There was my mom would see things quite a bit. And um, so, yeah, we, I can give you all kinds of uh, special effects. <laughs> that, uh, That's cool. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's fun. Great. Well, Matt, this is it's a little after three my time, a little after 11 yours. Yeah, I, just go. I appreciate this so much. And to all of you out there, Thank you. Um, spread the word. This will later today or tomorrow. It'll be on my YouTube channel and on the Simply Spooky uh, Facebook page. So um, share it and let other people know to come and watch. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you.